talk about the Holly Terminator X Max. It's a lot of words. What is it? Let's check it out. This little guy is a complete harness and ECU setup. ECU's on the back of the firewall. This is an affordable, budget friendly, easy to set up engine management system and has all kinds of features. Nitrous control, boost control, two step, self tuning, wide band built in. It's got a lot of shit. Problems. When people install this, they don't read the instructions. Who reads instructions? Fuck instructions, right? Wrong. You need that shit. It specifically says in the instructions how to hook this thing up. Can't get it wrong, right? But I know you didn't read them. Yeah, you. So we're gonna go over that today. All right. First and foremost, battery positive and negative has to go to the battery. Why to the battery? I have little posts on the back of my alternator. I got a distribution block right here. Don't use it. You're sending 12 volts up to that distribution block. You might be pulling shit from there. Your alternator might run off that. Your starter might run off that. It may get 10 volts off that distribution block. Run it to the battery. It always gets battery voltage. These things are real sensitive to battery voltage. All right. Second thing. When you set this up, you have to adjust the IAC. What's an IAC? I'm glad you asked. It's the intake air control valve. This little guy right here. This little guy that comes on the Holley Sniper EFI or most Holley throttle bodies is a GM Chrysler type IAC. It has the same sensor that you would have on a GM IAC, but A and C wires are reversed. So if you get a Holley GM harness and you're running a Holley um, throttle body, you may, if you only IAC that fits in there is the Chrysler, you may have to swap that over. So I did this. I was running a factory GM uh, throttle body that had a GM IAC on it, and it ran fine. And I switched over to this Holly Sniper unit, and my harness is off of GM. I'm now running a Chrysler IAC, so I depin this connector, which is really easy to do. I don't know if you guys have seen this before. Take this little guy off. Probably shouldn't be that easy. It must be made in China. Take this little guy off and you pry up this little black connector back here and this wire slides out. Slide, oh you gotta take this little plastic deal off too. Slide wire out, swap it over, switch A and C, now you're set up for Chrysler pin. Or Chrysler IAC pin out. So, how do you adjust the IAC? I can tell you about that while I put this little bad boy back on. So, you want to make sure your engine's up to normal operating temperature. If this is your first startup and you can't get there, you may have to hold the gas down a little bit just to get it up to temp. It may sound like booty hole and it may not get there, but you got to get the operating temp. Why you get the operating temp? When it's at operating temp, you're telling it this is the normal parameters for your vehicle and you're going to adjust the IAC to that. The IAC is a little plunger that goes in and out and closes off this little airflow in here into the throttle body from the throttle body to the intake manifold. It's just closing or opening a path of air. So you're telling it how much it needs to open and close to let more air in. It's like a controlled vacuum leak. So your engine's gonna be at normal operating temperature and you're gonna give it a fire up. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Mine's starting up now. See how it's a little rough? Sometimes you might gotta give it a little bit of gas the first time. Get this bad boy going.
adjustments out here on the throttle body. All right, over here at the throttle body, you're going to be adjusting your idle set screw right here. This is mine on the Holly. You guys have a factory GM throttle body. It screws into this little tab right there that goes down into the throttle body. There'll be a little screw hole in there and it'll raise and lower the screw in the throttle body. So when you open the throttle blades, it decreases IAC. If you close the throttle blades, it increases IAC. So my number was 20. I need to get down to two to 10. So I'm gonna be decreasing my IAC, which means I need to open the throttle blades some. So I'm gonna go to this little guy. And if you look, when I tighten this screw down, it tightens the screw down and it pushes the throttle blades up, which is gonna open my throttle blades. So I'm just gonna give it a full turn and see what it does. Let's go crazy. Full turn. Now, my TPS sensor, which showed zero before, when this throttle blade was down further, now it's gonna read probably one or two percent. So we have to do a TPS auto set. Don't worry, Holly does that too. Come on over and I'll show you how to do that. So first thing we're gonna do is turn the key on. The handheld's gonna boot up. See how my TPS reads four percent? This will not go into the idle parameters for this ECU if it's reading three to four percent on the TPS. It's going to think that it's trying to accelerate and it's not going to try to idle. So you need it to get to go back into idling. We're going to go to the wizard, TPS auto set, make sure ignition is on and engine's not started. It's on and not started. We're going to hit start, slowly press the pedal to the floor and do this, and slowly release. Do it twice. One, two. All right, next. It was successful. Good job, let's get a sticker. All done. Now, TPS is set. Now we're gonna see what the IAC looks like. So we're gonna go here in the monitor again. We're gonna try to go in the monitor again. Multi-gauge, and we'll do sensors. And we'll do sensors. TPS percent, so we're gonna watch, we're at zero percent now. IAC is at its hold position at 50%. And we're going to fire it up and see where it goes. Get a little bit of gas. Now it's going to settle out, right? It's going to dip a little bit. IAC is trying to find out where it wants to be. So it's adjusting. It's recalculating how much air it needs. It's making more adjustments. It's recalculating. We're getting pretty close, right? We're already in that 2 to 10% window. A lot of people recommend that we do 5%. Honestly, if I'm anywhere from 2 to 10, I'm kind of happy. Just drop it down. It may take a second to stabilize. It may drop down and keep dropping down as the temperature increases. My fan's on right now. I think I have it set at 180, 185. So it's probably going to stay right about that. It may climb just a little bit. So I'm probably sitting where I'm going to sit with that one turn. So if you guys are having a idle the idle's great but when you come to a stoplight it's dying on you one way you can check that put, put it in gear put on the brake and it's in gear watch what your iac does same iac comes up timing's starting to saw a little bit rpm's staying pretty consistent on this one so I may need to look at my timing table a little bit. That doesn't look that bad. Back to park. Put off the brake and I'll take a vacuum. That's going to drop down to about 5%. Alright, so it looks like that IAC adjustment is working good. If you're still having problems, there's some other things you can check. I'm going to go ahead and turn the motor off. Turn my ignition back on so I can check a few things. I'm going to go back to home. I'm going to go into tuning. System. Oh, sorry. Advanced. Advanced idle. This is going to check your IAC parameters, right? So. IAC control. I'm running a GM LSX. 
harness. It's a GM LSX IAC, but technically I reversed the wires so it will work on a Chrysler IAC. And my control is still going to be GM LSX. IAC is startup, 50%. We saw how it locked in at 50% when it fired up and it came back down. Some people can adjust that down a little bit. You've got to play with that to see what your motor likes. Start up hold time, that's how long it's going to hold that. Four seconds, decay time, it'll decay over the time of that period right there. So these are what factory comes with. You can mess with those to get your motor to kind of ramp down to idle or hold it up a little bit more, depending on what your engine's doing. If you have a larger camshaft, you may need to play in here a little bit. I'm running a GM ASA cam. I believe it's 226, 236. So it's not that crazy of a cam. Hold position is 30%. Ramp decay is at 3%. Ramp start is above 1,000 RPM. IAC kick at zero. I'm not using that, so let's set to zero. Idle spark is enabled. P turn and B turn. So this is your, I believe it's idle spark. If it's not, someone let me know in the comments. But uh, I was told that anywhere from 30 to 40% on P turn and 40 to 60% on D turn. When I loaded the wizard and it had the tune set up, this is what it gave me. It seems to work all right, so that's what I kept it with. Idle speed, this is the idle speed curve. The curve, the curve sets over your target idle speed and your coolant temperature sensor. So as you start to warm up, your idle speed's gonna drop. If you start it up when it's real cold, you're gonna have idle surge up a little bit and you get more fuel and crap in there. That's what's gonna happen. So this is your curve. If you wanna check your actual idle speed, you can go here tuning basic, basic idle, there's your idle speed. I got mine set to 850. Seems to idle okay there. I might play with it a little bit more in the future. That's pretty much it for this, for the IAC portion. If you're at a point where you're watching this video because you can't get your motor to fire up, a couple things you can look for that may be helpful. When your key's on, if it says stall, it's not syncing with your crank sensor yet. But once you start cranking it, it should show sync, and then it should show an RPM shortly after that. Whether or not it fires up, it should still see that. So if you don't have a crank sensor, you're not going to get spark. So make sure that you have this. If you don't have the crank sensor, again, check that. Sometimes if you have a newer 1X or 4X cam sensor, you're doing a different kind of cam swap, you may need to mess with the cam sensor also to see if it's syncing up with the cam and the crank sensor. There's some settings when you get a little more advanced and you buy the cable. The cable plugs into your laptop. You can change the different type of program that you have from speed density to alpha N. Alpha N actually does a, I'm not sure exactly what it's looking for, but it does not use the crank and cam sensor. I had a cam sensor go out and I figured that's how, figured out that's what it was by going to alpha N and it fired up with some gas with my foot on the throttle. And I was able to determine that it just wasn't seeing the crank sensor. So in troubleshooting some more on a system and learning how it works, I figured out that your stall, or uh, your sync's not happening, it's not seeing the crank sensor. And it'll also tell you that on the diagnostic LEDs, if six or seven go red, six I think is cam sensor, seven is the crank sensor, if either of those two go red, it means you got an issue. We'll fire this up and you guys can watch this RPM right here and see it, watch it go sync and it should show an RPM. day so that's all I got for this video if you guys have any questions or want to see anything more in the future about the Terminator X system and how awesome it is let me know please like subscribe please comments